As science teachers, we want to engage our students in the process of science, not just expose them to scientific knowledge. We want to give our students opportunities to explore concepts and ideas, and we want students to play an active role in developing and communicating those concepts. We want students to view themselves as active participants in the learning process, not just passive recipients of scientific facts. In this video, I want to walk through a physics lab experience you can use to start your year by having students involved in developing a procedure, data collection, data analysis, and collaborative discussion. This type of lab activity allows students to experience the process of science while also building a correct scientific understanding of the world around them. At the start of the year in physics, students need to learn different ways to represent the motion of objects. An easy way to do this is to have them investigate the motion of a battery-operated toy car, which moves at a constant speed. Through this lab experience, students will develop a definition of velocity, learn how to interpret position versus time graphs, and develop an equation which relates an object's position, time, and velocity. Remember, the goal is to have students play an active role in each part of this investigation, but rarely do students come to your classroom already knowing how this is done. This is your opportunity to guide them through the investigative process, inviting them in along the way. To begin this lab, start by demonstrating the motion of the toy car and ask students what they observe. Record students' observations on the board. You want the class to recognize that the car is moving at a constant speed in a straight line. Next, ask the students to identify what can be directly measured about the toy car. Also list these on the board. For each direct measurement, ask the students to identify what measuring tool they would use and what the unit of measure would be. For example, distance could be measured using a meter stick and the unit of measure would be inches or centimeters. Students often want to measure the speed of the car, but when asked what they would use to directly measure the car's speed, they mention using a meter stick and stopwatch. A meter stick and stopwatch would be used to directly measure distance and time, not speed. Since speed is not a quantity which can be directly measured, it's left off the list. Finally, ask students what pairs of measurements they think are possibly related and write these on the board. As a class, the students will investigate the relationship between one of the pairs of variables which are listed on the board. In order to reach the desired conclusion from the lab experience, you need to continue to ask students for possible pairs of related variables until they mention time and distance. Communicate that all of the listed pairs of variables would lead to interesting experiments. But for this lab experience, we will focus on how distance is related to time. Now that you've identified a pair of measurable variables which are related, you can write the purpose on the board. To determine the relationship between the distance the car moves and the time it takes to travel that distance, for a car moving at a constant speed. This is where you can help guide students through a procedure for collecting the needed data. To determine the relationship between any two measured variables, the students will need to collect a variety of different distances and time measurements. This is another place you can invite students into the investigative process. Ask students how this can be done. While discussing how distance can be measured using a meter stick or metric measuring tape, ask students what the number on the measuring device represents. Do they represent the distance traveled or something else? Through discussing a couple of examples, it should be clear that the meter stick is measuring the position of the object, the location of the car relative to some zero point or origin on a number line. Position is what is being directly measured using the measuring tape or meter stick, not distance traveled. With this in mind, our purpose statement should now read to determine the relationship between the position and time of a car moving at a constant speed. By the end of the class discussion about how the data will be collected, the student should agree on a method which either measures the time it takes to reach certain specific positions or the position of the car at specific times. The students will need to mark the zero position on the floor before collecting data and decide if the front or the back of the car will represent the car's position along the measuring tape. A common method for collecting data is to use a dry erase marker to mark the position of the car every one or two seconds as it moves along the floor. It takes some practice to make a mark at each time interval, so encourage students to try again if they're not confident with their initial markings. 
a metronome can be used to help time the marks if needed. A few basic guidelines when determining the type of relationship between two variables is to get a wide range of at least six to eight different values for each variable. Also, during the conclusion discussion, it's beneficial for lab groups to have different looking data. For this lab, have students use different speed cars, start at different initial positions, and move in different directions. It's helpful to pre-assign these guidelines to each lab group. You can make the constant velocity cars move slower by replacing one of the two C-cell batteries with a spacer made out of a dead C-cell battery wrapped in aluminum foil. I find it helpful to make similarly colored cars the same speed. For example, I make the red cars go fast with two C-cells and the blue cars go slow with one battery and one spacer. Analyze the collected position and time data. Have the students graph their data by placing the position values on the y-axis and the time values on the x-axis. Show students how they can write an equation from their graph showing the algebraic relationship between the position and time for their car. Any linear relationship can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, but you want your students' equations to include the specific variables and values from the graph of their specific data. Ask each lab group to discuss the shape of their graph and the significance or meaning of both the slope and the y-intercept of their graph and their equation. To facilitate a whole class conversation about the relationship between the position and time for objects moving at constant speeds, have each lab group record their graph and resulting equation on a large whiteboard like this. Have the class circle up so that everyone can clearly see the graphs and equations on each whiteboard. Remember that your goal is to help facilitate a conversation that allows your students to make connections and draw conclusions from the graphs and equations. Within this conclusion discussion, we want students to connect features of their graphs and equations with the motion of their car, which was used in the experiment. Start by asking the students to identify any similarities or differences in the graphs or equations. If you give groups different speed cars, starting positions and directions of motion, then the students will be able to identify similar graph shapes, but different graph steepnesses or slope values, different y-intercept values, and some positive and negative slopes. Now you can ask what led to different slope and y-intercept values. Why were some slopes positive and other slopes negative? The discussion surrounding these questions should lead students to the conclusion that the slope represents both the speed of the car, how many centimeters the car travels each and every second, and the direction the car is moving. A positive slope indicates the car is moving away from the zero position, and a negative slope indicates the car is moving towards the zero position. The students should also conclude that the y-intercept of the position versus time graph is the starting or initial position of the car. Each group's graph and equation only describes how the position of their car is related to time. Now with a consensus about the meaning of the slope and y-intercept, you can define velocity and show students how to write the general equation for all the cars. Simply replace the numbers of the slope and the y-intercept with symbols which represent the meaning of each. This general equation not only describes how position and time are related for all of the cars used in the experiment, it is also used to make predictions about the motion of these cars or any other object which moves in a straight line at a constant speed. The constant velocity cars and the whiteboards can be found at www.arborsci.com. To hear a more detailed explanation of the conclusion discussion, you can visit my YouTube channel, Devink Physics, and search for the video titled Toy Car Lab Conclusion Discussion. If you're interested in learning more about these types of guided inquiry labs, visit www.modelinginstruction.org. Happy investigating. I hope you found this video insightful. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. A new video will be posted every month, so if you enjoyed watching this one, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking this link right here. For more information on the products used in this video, check out the links in the description. And don't forget to watch our other cool videos.